evening. My name is Gordon Levitt, and I'm a current resident of Ward 3. On Sunday night, local youth began working on a prominent mural at arriving by bike on 27th and Willamette. We hope to complete the mural by the end of this month and encourage all of you to stop by and observe the progress. Given that many scientists believe that we have entered a new ecological epoch due to human impacts, the mural will depict the transformed planetary system that today's youth will inherit. While some of these changes are difficult to reverse, the mural will demonstrate that youth trust their leaders to lead a transition away from conventional status quo approaches to today's environmental challenges and toward innovative, sustainable solutions. The mural will remain as a testament to the commitment of Eugene's youth to a sustainable future. Yesterday, another round of global negotiations on the international response to climate change began in Warsaw, Poland. Negotiations quickly became emotional when Yeb Sano, the chief negotiator of the Philippines delegation, cried as he pledged to not eat during the two-week conference unless substantial progress is made to address the effects of climate change. As you may know, the Philippines were recently hit by super typhoon Haiyan, which may have been the strongest tropical cyclone in recorded history. This traumatic event is a strong reminder that we must do what we can to address climate change right now, and that we must continue planning for what may be a very different and difficult future. As we have mentioned before, we appreciate the dedicated efforts of Eugene's government to address climate change, including this, the Council's pending discussion of fossil fuel dis divestment. We believe that the goals that the City Council approved in the 2010 Climate and Energy Action Plan were visionary and groundbreaking. Progress has been made on these goals, but we must ensure that action continues and that Eugene remains at the forefront of innovative cl planning for climate protection and recovery. We owe it to Eugene's youth to show them that the sustainable future that they are envisioning on 27th and Willamette is possible and that we care about making substantial progress now. Tonight, local youth and our Children's Trust are presenting a climate recovery ordinance for your consideration. I urge the mayor and city manager to schedule a council work session as soon as possible to address the youth's concerns. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pause for just a sec. Oops. <laughs> You're presenting. Oh, Got it. Watch out for the wires. Thank you. I thank you. You've been presenting. Um, Nicholas Fox is up next, um, but I would also like to, of the part of the Eugene City Council, to express our deep uh, sympathy for the folks in um, uh, the Philippines. You're going to have to come and retrieve their speaking points from her. <laughs> Nicholas? Somebody could have come up with Nicholas? Right there. Right there. I know it's different than last time, huh? Am I right here? Yeah, you got to just pull up a chair and, or stand, whichever you want. Greetings, City Council. My name is Nicholas Fox. I'm back from two weeks. I am a second grader in Eugene, and I am really concerned about global warming. I try to, my hardest, to stop climate change, and I hope everybody else will try their hardest, too. Please stop climate change in order to have many safe organisms on this planet. I hope many people are working to stop global warming. More people than those that vote for coal, fracking, oil, gas, and nuclear. I ask you to please take action on the suggested ordinance that we gave you to cut carbon pollution. I will... Be back to testify again in a few weeks. Thank you. No, uh, honestly, we don't we don't clap, but um, I think you can do the uh, this if you want to <laughs> show them that you yeah right. Um, and the reason I wanted to tell you why we don't clap is because our city council meetings are supposed to be a place that no matter what your viewpoint is, it, it's, it's a safe place for you to be. So we ask people not to clap or boo or talk out or any of those things, just so you understand. So Julia Olson is up next and followed by Teo Olson. Good evening, I'm Julia Olson. I'm a resident of Eugene. And I wanted to let you all know that today, also in honors of in honor of Veterans Day yesterday, um, a general, a vice admiral, and a rear admiral who served the United States for decades filed an amicus curiae brief, a front of the court brief, in the U.S. Court of Appeals in the D.C. Circuit. And the reason they filed this brief was to support young people who have sued the federal government 
for failing to reduce our carbon emissions at the scale that's needed to reverse climate change. And in this brief, they detailed the national security threats that climate change poses to our country. And they also described the opportunity that it creates to really do something about it. Um, this brief is on the Our Children's Trust website, and I encourage you to read it. It's a really amazing story, and everybody should take a look at it. Um, I also wanted to just take a moment to <clears throat> also reflect on what's happening in the Philippines right now with the typhoons that are unlike anything they've seen before. And I have friends who are in the Philippines who are affected by this right now. And this is all part of the story of climate change. That ordinance that we submitted, we think it's a really great ordinance. And one of the things I think you'll like about it is that it asks you to formally adopt by law the goals that the city council has already set for itself unanimously. And these goals are important, but they're not legally binding. And it's very important that we create rules that we can abide by and that the community can depend upon. So thank you very much. Okay, well, Olson is next, followed by Maggie and Sahara. Hello, my name is Teo Corver Frost Olson. I live in Eugene, Oregon. I'm nine years old and in fourth grade. On Sunday night, we started to draw the outline of a mural on the side of arriving by bike on Willamette and 27th Street. This Thursday, um, we are going to start painting inside of the outline. The purpose of the mural is to show people how climate change is occurring and how we can make a difference. Last night, me and my class went on a field trip to watch salmon spawn, and if climate change gets any worse, that won't be able to happen. Tonight, we will be giving you the ordinance for climate recovery and as soon as possible, put climate change on the agenda. Thank you. Maggie and Sahara are next, followed by Ama Makita. Mike, Mike, um, hi, my name is Sahara, and hi, my name is Maggie. We are fourth graders at the Village School, which is right behind Willamette Street and 29th Avenue. We also both live a few blocks away from the Willamette Street. We use lots of stores on that street. The bank, the bowling alley, and even our dentist is on Willamette Street. We saw the newspaper, we saw in the newspaper the city's different choices for fixing Willamette Street, 29th Avenue. We think alternative three is the best choice because it makes room for cars and bikes and people who want to walk. Um, Sometimes we walk to the grocery store, sometimes we drive, but we don't um, ride our bikes because there are no bike lanes, and it isn't safe for us. It, it would be better to bike because it creates less pollution. The city of Eugene should support the bike lanes and other actions that protect us in our environment. We want the city to plan for our future. Please listen to us and other youth. We trust you. If there are bike lanes on Willamette Street, more people would bike, and we should encourage more people to bike instead of drive because it's fun, makes less pollution, and is good ex exercise, so people would be healthier. Bike lanes would also help drivers slow down, which would make the street safer for everyone. We like Willamette Street a lot because there are nice people living in the neighborhood <coughs> and there are nice places to go. Thank, Thank you. Amma Makaitu, you'll correct me about how you pronounce it right now. Hi, my name is Ama. Ama, thank you. I'm 10 years old and live in Eugene. I'm here to talk about global warming. I want to know that my great-grandkids will see the beautiful land we have here now. But if global warming does not stop soon, my great-grandkids might not see the world we see now. And I'm here to tell you some ways we could reduce the amount of fuels we use every day. We should have solar-powered cars and more no-driving days. There should be cleanups where... If you help, you get entered into a raffle to win bikes so you can drive less. And more programs to get kids involved. And if we do this, we can, we can make a change, and a big one too. We need to have more daytime bike races. Then people might start liking biking more. Then possibly give up on cars. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up is Kira. Kira. Followed by Pete Frost. 
Good evening, City Council. I'm Kira Gunther, and I'm 20 years old and an LCC student in environmental studies. Um, in my young life and doing activist work, I've come to understand the greatest gap between people and real change is a lack of understanding or validation of the issue at hand. In Bio 101, we discuss the complementary systems of aerobic respiration and photosynthesis. The cycling of carbon dioxide and oxygen perpetuates life. And my instructor asked if anyone knew the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration this year <coughs> CO2 levels around 400 parts per million. CO2 concentrations haven't been that high in over 15 million years that um, the atmospheric CO2 must return to 350 parts per million at, by the end of this century to avoid an acceleration in the heating of our planet, the melting of ice and the permafrost, and rising of sea levels that would disrupt human and natural systems. In a lab for the same biology course, we were given probes that measure CO2 concentrations in the air. In my classroom that morning, the probe fluctuated between 380 and 400 parts per million. My lab partner proceeded to inform me that CO2 is good for plants and therefore would increase agriculture and food production. Do not understand is that plants can only take up so much CO2 and are limited by other necessary nutrients. The CO2 does and will continue to heat our atmosphere. Unless directly involved, people do not understand the effects of convenience to consume. I can put up posters, canvas with petitions, speak at city council meetings, and I can scream and yell in Congress. But we will not adjust to this changing climate fast enough without the validation and encouragement of local governments on the people they represent. People need this direction. We are bombarded by stories of destruction alongside with fluffed projections that comfort us in thinking we can continue to consume in the same ways. The science is sound, but it scares me to think about how many ordinances, laws, and meetings will have to go on in order to spark real change, and that most people still do not understand the tipping point we now stand on. I urge you, Eugene City Council, to consider the Climate Recovery Ordinance our, child our Children's Trust has drafted and bring upon an understanding and conversation about climate change amongst your constituents. Thank you. Keith Frost is next, followed by Candace Shrek. Thank you, Mayor Piercy. Council members, I'm the proud father of K.O. Corver, Martin Frost, although he comes and speaks of his own volition. Mm -hmm. um, I do conservation law for a living, and on Thursday I'm going to go address the register guard about the fisheries up the Mackenzie and the wild fish that exist there and how important they are to many people in our community. And the context of looking at some of the things I'm going to be talking to the op-ed board about, one of them is the recent study suggesting that in the next 50 years, the Mackenzie is going to drop by 40 to 50 percent flow due to snowpack decline. And so I think when you are considering this ordinance, oftentimes with climate change, it seems like something very ephemeral and away from our community. You know, we, we don't suffer the way that Tacloban is suffering now. We don't suffer the way that some of these other communities are. But I think it's coming. And I think we have a responsibility uh, to our kids, to our families, to our community members to anticipate the changes and to take a stand that is a community given the very real consequences of this and, and what's coming toward us in the very near future. If you just want to look at drinking water supplies, which the Mackenzie, of course, is the supply for our city, that's what's coming. There's going to be some real consequences. And so I'm hopeful and very supportive of this ordinance and hopeful that the, uh, the council will give it uh, due consideration. Thank you. And Shrek is up next. Followed by Christina Liu. Hello, I'm Candace.